Hello, welcome to Prime Talk. Palm Dunya is my name. For some time now, we have heard so much about environmental consciousness. We've heard so much about the depletion of the ozone layer and how that has been affecting now. We've heard about global warming and so many other things like that. How can we help ourselves out of the situation? I am being joined in the studios, as it were, by Dr. Babajide Abola. He is the president. Environmental Resources Conservative Initiative. Sir, you're welcome to Prime Talk. Thank you very much. It's actually my privilege to have you. Admitted. Well, as it were, we have made some brief remarks about conservation. We've made some remarks on the environment. But before we look at some of the issues involved in environmental conservation, we'd like to know briefly who is Dr. Agbola. Um, Dr. Agbola is a vet doctor, over 40 years old and um, married with two kids mm -hmm. and uh, very conscious of the environment. <laughs> okay, they don't want to tell us about that, so okay. Yeah, when you say you are very conscious of the environment, what are you trying to tell us? Now, everybody around forget one thing. We think my backyard is my backyard forgetting that my backyard is the front yard of my next door neighbor. Mm -hmm. So instead of dumping trash in my backyard, we should be conscious that, look, everything around us is whole. And take, for example, the emission in your own kitchen. You think, yes, it's in my kitchen. Mm -hmm. It doesn't affect any other person. No, it blows to under place. So, the whole environment is one, and everybody has to be conscious of it. Okay. Now let us go back to Environmental Resources Conservative Initiative. What actually motivated setting up this uh, organization? Now, a couple of nature enthusiasts came together about uh, uh, 2004, and uh, we saw the level of de degradation of the environment, cutting of trees, mm -hmm. the loss of wildlife, biodiversity and then a nonchalant attitude to mining ponds the effects so we got together look these things if something is not done to halt this action mm -hmm. tomorrow we'll be telling our children that this particular tree used mm -hmm. to grow here or this particular animal used to live here mm -hmm. so to avoid that we said look we have to conscientize everybody mm -hmm. about what the environment is all about and set ball in motion to protect and preserve it okay so in a way can we can we optimize the importance of trying to conserve nature now health wise yeah it is for our own good because if you have foul air everybody's going to breathe it in mm -hmm. and everybody's going to get sick for prosperity posterity mm -hmm. A situation where our grandchildren will ask you, what did an elephant look like? We only have to refer to photographs because we've killed out all the elephants. Or what did the clip springer, referred to as Gadan Dusi, look like? We now start scratching our head. Um, it looked like, um, ha, ah, you now ask your wife, when you were growing up, did you see a clip springer? So mm. to protect those things, we have to be conscious okay now talking about protecting the environment talking about conservation how is that possible in light of today's developments the city is growing just it's almost merging with uh, Bukuru for instance and then there's a lot of development people there's population increase and so on so what is involved actually in conserving nature okay thank you for that question in today's developing world, mm -hmm. the growth of the city is fueled by inflow from the urban area, from the rural area, sorry. Yeah. Now, most of nature is in the rural area. Mm -hmm. Now, why do people move from the rural area such of money? If we make the rural area attractive yeah. for them to stay in and have positive way of living, then the urban areas will not be swelling. Take for example now, we have the rural area. You have 
the animals. You have nature. Mm -hmm. Ecotourism. Mm -hmm. If you have youth trained in how to take tourists around, mm -hmm. they knowing their environment, knowing the animals, knowing the insects, knowing the trees, ecotourism will pick up. There's good dollars from ecotourism, which is one of the things we are trying to encourage. Yeah, maybe we'll, we'll look at that a little later, but we're looking at how we can actually conserve, we can actually maintain, protect, with protect the, the environment yes, with, with the, with the growth, with development. I would say, now, if we can stem the flow into the urban area, yeah. then we are a step ahead. Then if we can have our urban planners mm -hmm. plan properly, yeah. Instead of having choked up setups, yeah. we have trees in the area. You don't need too much to have birds around. Once they have trees to shelter and you have good running water, mm -hmm. we don't block the flow or dump refuse in it. Mm -hmm. We are on the way to having a conducive environment. You know, you know I'm, I'm a little worried because um, can, can we actually stop rural urban trees? Um, we can reduce it. We can't stop it. Mm. How to reduce it is to make the rural area attractive. Provide power. Provide water. Now, my own idea of providing power to the rural area is using renewable energy. Solar. Wind. It's there. And then use the resources available in the rural area judiciously. Take, for example, fuel wood. Now, we cut trees indiscriminately. If we have a setup where we plant trees mm -hmm. and then we have fuel efficient stove to use the trees that we are using as firewood, mm -hmm. we will use more, less wood for more cooking. That way, the rural area will use the resources available judiciously mm -hmm. and then we have people staying in there rather than moving into the urban area. There will be wealth creation. Mm -hmm. We have a program called South for Life where we give a family a pig. You raise the pig, you have enough protein from pig, and then you now use feces from the pig to produce biogas for cooking. So with this little, little innovation, the rural area will be attractive, and they will stay in there. Okay. Now, the, the Environmental Resources Conservative Initiative has been there, and I would like to know what your main objectives are even though we've gone into this discussion um the main objective apparently is mm. encouraging a dynamic equilibrium between man and his environment okay now to achieve that mm. there are a couple of things that you have to put into consideration okay it is a two-way traffic where i'm from there's an adage that says a child that doesn't open his arm mm -hmm. will not be carried by her, his or her mother. Yeah. So those on ground should be ready for changes. Take for example, now you bring a project to an area. The first thing about the project is listening to what the project is about. If you are talking and nobody's listening, then it's a one-way traffic. Yeah. So both parties, that is those who will benefit from such projects and those who are bringing such projects mm -hmm. must be in unison. Okay. Well, now let us look at um, your performance since you started in 2004. If we must do some kind of evaluation, how would you want to say you've been able to do so far? Um, I'll leave the rating to those who are looking at us from outside. Yeah, except for now. I don't know about you. But what we are trying to do, <laughs> yeah. take for example, promote ecotourism. We take tourists into the hills of Afiziri land. Mm -hmm. The Sherry, Jarawa, Fusa Hills. They are beautiful landscapes with abundance of wildlife, but very scared because of hunting. Mm -hmm. Now, people are now being conscious of what ecotourism can bring to the land. We are encouraging the use of renewable energy. We have uh, one or two families now running on solar in the locality. Mm -hmm. Then we're introducing biogas, showing them that it is possible to produce cooking gas from wastes. The fuel efficient stove we've introduced to some 
of the houses in the locality. And as of now, we are training five youths to know how to build this fuel efficient stove and take the gospel round, build for other families so that they will see that, look, the three stone method of cooking is wasteful. And um, we've introduced solar dryer mm -hmm. into some of the areas, but it hasn't really taken root because it is only functional during the dry season. The situation where when there's abundance of fruits, mango, tomatoes, pepper, and all those vegetables that mm -hmm. we all just rush them to the market. With the solar dryer, you can dry tomatoes, dry pepper, and they are still, you know, they, they still maintain their nutrients. Mm -hmm. That when you want to now use, you just reconstitute with water, grind, and use. Mm -hmm. Unlike drying it out in the sun, which the color, it, it um, spoils the color, and you lose a lot of nutrients, and then you have a lot of bacterial contamination. Mm -hmm. So these are the little things we're trying to do to impact in the community which we are working from. Okay, thank you very much. The program is Prime Talk, and uh, we've been trying to look at how friendly we can be, <coughs> excuse me, with our environment. Discussions will continue after this time out. Stay tuned. You welcome back, uh, Dr. Agbola. We have been trying to evaluate your performance, but we'd like to know if uh, you have any structures on ground that will help you to be able to achieve your set goals. Thank you very much. As of now, we are setting up a climate change awareness resource center in Zarazon, okay. which will serve as a nucleus to spread the message of conservation, with especially climate change awareness for now. Okay. Because it's a big, huge topic. So what's this climate change? Now, there are two different schools of thoughts. Okay. That it is a natural occurring phenomenon. Okay. Yes, natural phenomenon. But, and that school of thoughts, it is as a result of our action, human action, release of gases, carbon dioxide being one of the gases into the atmosphere, causing a shielding of the upper layer of the atmosphere, resulting to what you call greenhouse effect. Okay. Now you have a situation where the sun comes in, hits the earth, normally it should bounce back, mm -hmm. lose some of the heat. But with this coating of uh, CO2 and other gases, it blocks the escape of that heat, which end up heating up the atmosphere, causing a slight increase in temperature. Okay. For the past uh, couple of years, what has happened has been unprecedented. We've had an increase in temperature uncomparable to many years ago mm. from fossil data and everything. So these ones are causing the climate to change. Now, why is it climate change, not global warming? Okay, because, to global yes, warming. Yeah. because you see the atmosphere moves right around. Okay. Right. So in some places it's causing warming, in some places it's causing cooling. Okay. So it's better to refer to it as climate change. Okay. And then because of these kind of changes, we're having erratic weather situations. Okay. Floods, that's increased precipitation causing flood. The Sahara moving in faster because of the dry wind. Mm -hmm. The dryness of the Lake Chad causing uh, asthma in far places as far as uh, the Caribbean islands mm. because the wind from the Sahara goes that far the dry dust okay. so it's a lot of things put in one that if we don't start understanding it and preaching it by the time it comes down take for example there was a river mm. a few weeks ago yeah. was going back to its old course Mm. But, but you know, I ha this, this climate change, if, if what you, you're actually saying is anything to go by as in saying that uh, due to releases of gases into the air, and uh, I want to believe too due to industrial activities, production and so on and so forth, we shouldn't be experiencing the global, I mean we shouldn't be uh, experiencing climatic change around this place because not much of 
industrialization is taking place here. So, you see, that's the mistake a lot of people make. That's why I said, your backyard is mm -hmm. the front yard of your next door neighbor. Yeah. Why is this? The whole world is one. I it agree. is not Africa, America, mm -hmm. Australia, Eurasia. No, we are one. The air goes right round. The sun hits everybody, but different times. Yeah. So the activities in the U.S. affects as far back as Mangu, Shendam, Lantang mm -hmm. here. So the effect of global warming is total. It is not isolated to one place. Although some people are causing more of the release of the CO2 and other gases that causes the global warming. That's the climate change effect. Okay. Uh, the, the other thing is you, you must have had some challenges since 2004 when you started. Yes, some challenges indeed. I live in a rural area. Okay. As a veterinary doctor, those in the rural area don't expect a vet doctor to come and live in such a place because they expect you as a doctor you should be in a well built up area mm -hmm. with all the convenience and even a small hut so people didn't take me serious at first some people even came as far as asking to see my certificate That's <laughs> <laughs> some people thought that oh he must have committed fraud somewhere and ran into the village here to hide no so trust took a time took, took some time to build up and that time is time lost yeah mm -hmm. well, well it's expected anyway you don't think so mm -hmm. yes i expected it but okay well, thank god yeah now you you did mention that you're setting up a project somewhere in zarazon or so yes uh, the, the the choice of location for this project what informed it now zarazon is a rural area very close to an urban area okay we should not be so should I have been further away? Yes, you expect a rural area to be 50 kilometers, 30 kilometers from an urban area. Mm -hmm. So that pepped me. We need to do some things to upgrade the level of the rural area in this country. And this area, at least being close to urban area, mm -hmm. I can escape once in a while to the urban area and get in touch with realities there and come back into the rural area. Mm -hmm. And then you have the beautiful, very beautiful landscape of our physical land. Mm. The hills there are wonderful. And if something is not done, we will lose it. So I have taken up that challenge in collaboration with my colleagues that, look, this is the place to be. Okay. And uh, you, you have said so much about ecotourism. You've said so much about beautiful landscape. And when you talk about environmental conservation, you're actually talking about some form of the appreciation of nature. How is what you are doing related to tourism? Plato State, you know, of course, is a, a state that uh, is of peace and tourism. Is this your initiative doing anything to promote tourism? Yes. You see, as I said, you cannot protect the environment on an empty stomach. You cannot protect the environment on an empty stomach. Yes. You need to bring in fund. Now, if the people that have the environment are not aware of it, it's not being protected. Yeah. I'm going to ecotourism now. To run ecotourism, you need the people. Because whoever is coming on an ecotour visit wants to see the people which are part of the ecosystem, their culture, their food, their language. Now, with ecotourism, you empower a community in that they know the value of what you, they have. Mm -hmm. Let me give you an example. Last year, August, an eight-foot python was killed in Kudedu. Now, they came to inform me, at least. They now know that somebody, and I called them, how much did you sell that python? They said 5,000. So do you think that is money? You've eaten 5,000 once, and that's gone. So now, if you had informed me, all I'll do is take a photograph of this python, go to the internet, mail it. Anybody wants to see an eight-foot-long python in Africa, in Plateau State, get online and inform me. You see a lot of people, even just from Abuja, the Abuja experts. Yeah. By the time they come in, they are paying probably one 1,000 to the tour guide who will take them in. 
Now, five people have paid for the cost of eating one python. <laughs> and that will continue but, for a whole year. Yeah, but the python, will it be caged? Will it be somewhere you can see? Or will it just be in the wild? That's the thing. It can move around in the wild. So how do you track it? <laughs> Radio tracking. Very simple. Okay. And youths, that's what I'm saying. If you have youths keeping an eye on where it is, a python is not running anywhere. It is an animal that lives in a particular locality, which is his territory. So if you have a couple of youths keeping an eye on where the python is, you pay them something for their services. Because these tourists are bringing in something. So yeah. gradually, you improve the livelihood of those who depend on that natural environment. Okay. Now, you, you actually talked about partnership. You've been working with some people. I'd like to know what kind of partnership do you need and from who? Now, we have a project, Project Quick, where we have a proposal to, you know, written out to uh, delineate Sherry, Fusa, and Jarawa Hills as a protected area. That partnership has to come from government. We don't have the right to declare a protected area. Now, if government of Plateau State can sit down with us, delineate this area in collaboration with the local community, because we believe in bottom-up approach to development, okay. Pro declare this area a protected area. We have uh, a couple of uh, organizations, uh, countries, willing to assist, like the Namibian government now, they are ready to train tour guides, but all we have to do is free to them to Namibia. And whatever, whatever duration it takes, they will train. So the government <coughs> has to come in. Private sector too. Take for example, we have um, Equator Hills, mm -hmm. who we work with for the ecotourism aspect of the NGO. And then we have um, Solar uh, Renewable Energy Systems, Nigeria Limited, who help us okay. with solar installations. Ta, thank you very much and it's like our time is, is against us but just one last word to our viewers out there what would like to tell citizens of Nigeria here on the plateau with regards to the appreciation of the natural environment now the day I die I want it to be remembered that this guy tried all his best and when I go six feet they put a mango tree on me that will take the nutrients so that my Kaka doesn't go to waste. That's just about it. <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, for some time now, we've been trying to encourage ourselves in conserving nature, in preserving nature, in appreciating nature. And of course, you can be a part of it. For some time now, I've been speaking with Dr. Bola, who is the president of the Environmental Resources Conservative Initiative. So once again, it's my pleasure to have you on the program. Thank you. The pleasure Thank is mine. Much, yeah. Prime Talk, you can be sure we'll be back some other time. Keep a date with us. Have a wonderful day.